there's a tremendous amount of importance uh, for a man to be cognizant of the import of the magnitude of his words. <clears throat> words fall in the center of the progression. And so to illustrate how the demon sees this and, and how it works functional with regard to functional theology, think of the three persons of the Trinity in light of the three theological virtues, thought, word, deed. So God the Father becomes analogous to thought. Christ the Son is analogous to words. And the Holy Ghost is analogous to deeds. So in the Confidior, we confess, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, and in my deeds, what I have done and what I have failed to do. And then there, we have the threefold, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. This is an abbreviated version of the Confidior in the traditional Mass, but the gist is the same. Uh, still confessing thought, word, deed with the threefold mea culpa. Words and gestures mean things, and so everything, let's take everything back and relate it to the Trinity. So the, the three theological virtues that are infused into you at baptism for the first time are faith, hope, and charity. And if you see that progression, faith in God the Father begets hope in Christ the Son and is perpetuated through the charity of the Holy Spirit. So now we have an overlay, faith, hope, charity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, thought, word, deed. So what the demon looks for is he looks for the man of contradiction. He looks for the mouth that both blesses and curses. He looks for the inconsistency between thought, word, and deed. And it's not that he can read our thoughts. It is that action begins as thought. So God the Father, the unseen God of creation, becomes manifest when he speaks. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and nothing that came to be came to be without him. And we know as Catholics, and the demon knows, that the Word is Christ. The Word is Jesus Christ. And so these manifestations, revelation through manifestation, goes back to the very beginning, the creation. And so God's first attribute and man's first correct attribute should be order. And this is the imposition of order in our thoughts, both the custody, as St. Thomas would say, the custody of the thought, the faculty uh, of intellect and, and will together as the reason. We have a, a duty to keep that instrument pure, to keep that faculty pure. So as men, our first charge in our domestic church and for a priest, his first charge is the ability to tell clean from unclean. This goes back to the Levitical language for the people will present themselves to the priest to determine whether they are clean or unclean or the activity or the spot, whatever it may be, the thing, whether it is clean or unclean. What does this mean modernly? It means that we as men are responsible for what comes into our home and the practices therein. So we must be able to tell clean from unclean. We will not be able to discharge this sacred duty. We will not be able to discharge this unless we ourselves are clean. You lose the perspective. And it is, uh, it is either clean or unclean. It is not, uh, there's not a, a gray area here, if you will. It, it is truly black and white. The demon's favorite shade is gray. He wants to pull you into um, this idea of you, you can't know or that it's somehow difficult. It's not. So if we, if we simply rephrase the question that, and ask our family to rephrase the questions they ask us, for instance, if you've got children, you know it's a constant, may I do this or may I do that? And we ourselves interact with priests saying, Father, is it bad if I do this? 
if we were to rephrase the question and say, Father, is it good if I do this? Then we would not only ask fewer questions, but the answers would become self-evident. We can train ourselves to do this. We can also train our children and our wives to do this, to think, um, is this good for the family? Is it, does it serve the greater good? Does it serve the economy of salvation? Or is this something purely that I want to pursue as a selfish pleasure? It really sheds a different light on things. And so where I'm going with this is that all of us are configured to God uh, through vocation. And so for us as married men, we're configured to God through the vocation of marriage, for the religious, through the vocation of religious life. But either way, it is a total gift of self, and that man's duty responsibility is the same both in marriage and in holy orders and that is to prepare himself for fatherhood so let's talk for a moment about what is fatherhood fatherhood is the responsibility for a soul if a young man says i want to be married because i want to have children this is actually an impure motivation if a young man says i'm called to the priesthood this is a bit of an impure motivation the pure calling is I'm called to give myself to God in one of these two vocations and let the superior, God in marriage, your bishop and or abbot and or prior, but your formator in religious life, determine whether or not you attain the status of father. What is father? Father means responsibility for souls. This is why we call priests fathers. Is our spiritual fathers that have a responsibility for souls. We, as parents, have a responsibility for the souls that are providentially placed in our care. We don't see it that way. I, I assure you that the demon does see it that 